Hi, I'm Dr. Smita Ramachandran. I'm a pediatric and adolescent endocrinologist, senior consultant at Venkateshwar Hospital, Dwarka. Today, I want to discuss about managing type 1 diabetes during Ramadan. We know Ramadan is the holy month of praying and fasting for Muslims all over the world. However, it can pose a few challenges for type 1 diabetics during this time. I would like to discuss a few facts how to manage fasting and blood sugars during this time. So the most commonly asked is, who are the people who are children who should be exempted? So ideally it is said, any child below 12 years should avoid fasting. Any child who is unwell, sick or has a medical condition should again be exempted. Children who are travelling or who have learning difficulties may also find it difficult to fast. Women who are pregnant or lactating should avoid fasting as well. So what are the three main complications that we usually encounter in type 1 diabetics during Ramadan? First is hypoglycemia or when the sugars are low. This can happen if you are not eating adequately or if your insulin doses are high. Second, you can have hyperglycemia which is very high sugars. Again, if your insulin doses are incorrect. The third is diabetic ketoacidosis. This is the most serious form which is a combination of both low insulin and high sugars and fasting can lead to this and hence should be prevented. What are the important things to remember before we start fasting? First and foremost is blood sugar monitoring. It is the key to maintaining normal sugars. We should be measuring their blood sugars pre-meal and two hours post-meal or any time the child feels uncomfortable, lethargic, sweating, additional blood tests should be undertaken. Second thing is, so what do you eat? The most important meal during Ramadan is Suhoor or Sehri, the first meal of the day. This is a time that you need to take adequate amount of proteins, carbohydrates and fibers because this meal is going to take you through your day. Your carbohydrates should be high carbohydrate starchy foods like wheats, cereals, grains which are low in glycemic index. You should also have adequate amount of proteins in the form of rice, uh, dal, chanas, rajma. Fibers will be from your fruits and vegetables. Additionally, during this time is when you should take lots of fluids. Fluid should be not sugar, not caffeinated and not aerated because this is what is going to keep you hydrated throughout the day. Then is the second most important meal is iftar in the evening when you're breaking your fast. Traditionally, it is done with dates and water. Water should be taken adequately, like I said, to prevent dehydration. One date roughly has about 10 to 15 grams of carb. So start breaking your fast with one date and a glass of water is excellent. However, throughout the day when you're not fasting, sweet foods and foods which are fried should be taken in moderation. When taking these, you should be remember to count your carbs and give your insulin doses accordingly. So to conclude, what are the key points to remember? First and foremost, blood sugar monitoring and carb counting should continue throughout the period of fasting. Insulin doses should be adjusted according to your blood sugars and your meal sizes. Second, water intake should be maintained adequately during the non-period of fasting to prevent dehydration. And most importantly, before you start fasting, sit with your endocrinologist, discuss your diet plan and your insulin doses to so have a safe fasting. Happy Ramadan!